Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Thank you for listening to this podcast because it's really growing in, uh, I don't know if the word popularity is correct, but more and more people are listening. So that's, you know, I'd just like to say thank you. In fact, it's moving towards being one of the most popular podcasts that I do. So I'm kind of excited about that. Because I've got a few, I do the Let Me Bore You to Sleep podcast. And I've got the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis podcast. And I've got the Sleep Hypnosis Weekly podcast. I've got two podcasts that have all of my sleep sessions on. So every time I do a new recording, I put it on there. And I've also got this podcast as well. So those are the, how many is that? Let me bore you sleep, deep sleep, sleep house to me, this. So there's six podcasts that are kind of at the most popular scale out of 35. I've actually got 35, I think, all together. So I've also got like self-development, one self-help, uh, chronic pain, smoking, all those kind of stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. So... this is growing so I thought before I start the actual session let me just uh, let you know how things are going with this podcast so I don't normally do this on this you know before recording here but I just wanted to sort of let you know that what have I got? 74,585 um, downloads so far. Um, on this podcast. And yesterday I had 648 downloads. The day before, 644. And today so far, 107 downloads. Uh, it's 5.46 in the morning and I've not even, I've not made a recording since the 19th of January and it's now the 24th. Uh, on the 19th of January, oh okay, so yeah, so that's, I uh, just want to say thank you because without you listening, there'd be no point me recording, so thanks. And that's it. So I look forward to reaching a hundred thousand um, downloads for this for this uh, podcast. And just to give you an idea, the other podcast, Hypnosis of Sleep, and deeply, one hundred forty six thousand eight hundred downloads. And that's like the top one. But Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis, one hundred twenty four thousand nine hundred seventy two. And let me bore you to sleep is 93,560. So I want this, I kind of want this podcast to, I'm just interested in seeing how it goes because I'm getting more downloads here than I am on some of the other uh, ones daily. So yeah, anyway, I just wanted to do a quick thank you before I, start the actual recording and it kind of fits in with what I just did just then gratitude gratitude I find now I'm not saying that everyone's going to find this and you know or, or that I'm special or anything like that but I find 
that when I feel grateful, I mean properly feel grateful, sort of inside, um, naturally feeling grateful towards something that I have or you know, whatever it could be, I feel relaxed. I feel calm. And that that feeling, that emotion of gratitude seems to trigger some kind of chemical in my brain which sends, you know, that feeling of calmness and relaxation throughout my body and in my mind my mind feels calmer and I guess if you think about it logically we react don't we to what we're thinking about what we're thinking about affects our body in the same way as how our body feels can affect what we think about. So with someone with chronic pain or someone with a, let's say someone has a broken ankle, then initially that's probably the, that's going to be the focus of that person's attention. Like when I broke my wrist, fell out of the bath, don't laugh. Uh, it's a few years ago when I first moved into this place that I'm living in. I slipped out of the bath and I broke my wrist. I also hurt my shoulder and you know, luckily I didn't hit my head on anything so um, I didn't cause, <laughs> mind you I don't know if it would have made much difference to my head but it's, I broke my wrist, I went to the hospital and had, um, you know, just, my focus was the wrist. But you know what? What was weird about that? Is I kind of felt grateful. Um, and this is going to be a weird thing that you may not kind of relate to. And I won't sort of delve into it too deeply. But with... Or you may completely understand this, but from the other side, it, you know, it's, it, it could, it, it's a potentially damaging thing as well. So when I was sitting in the hospital with my broken wrist, waiting to be seen, I knew it was broken. I've had a few broken bones. I know the difference between a sprain and a break. Just, there's just basically it's as simple as the initial pain with a break stays not forever but it stays with you it doesn't subside that pain maybe not the right initial pain but basically the pain stays with a bruise with a sprain it does reduce you know within Within a short enough time, it does reduce. Maybe not to the to the extreme where you feel fine, because you still may need medical attention. But it reduces a break. In my experience, stays. That initial kind of pain level seems to stay for whatever reason. So I'm in the hospital, and part of me. Is I'm in, actually I'm in a really good mood. First of all, I thought it was funny. The, the circum the circumstances of falling out of the bath amused me for some reason. I didn't find it funny at the time when it happened. Um, I really didn't because I couldn't get off the floor because the way I was positioned, I had to put all my weight on to the left wrist, which was broken. So I kind of. You know, I was just like slip, slipping around everywhere. And I was naked as well, so that wasn't good. And I started feeling grateful and finding it funny at the same time. 
because what if I had needed an emergency, you know, like a, an ambulance to come and get me? I'd have been there naked, and that would have been, well, I could see the humour in that, as well as the the trauma to them seeing me naked, probably, uh, the paramedics. But I also felt grateful that that didn't happen. Which seemed to reduce my stress levels. I felt grateful that actually, first of all, it was only my wrist. And it was just a break. It wasn't an open fracture. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't my shoulder, which would have been a lot more painful, I'm guessing. I've injured my shoulder before and it's a lot more... Uh, restricting because of you know the size of it and everything but just my little wrist I could deal with that as fine and it was my left hand so I could I was grateful that it was my left hand not my right hand because I'm right handed so it meant I could still do all the other things that I normally do uh, without having to go six weeks without being able to sort of do that stuff because I've broken my right hand twice in the past and that's that's very restricting left wrist well, not so bad as far as restrictiveness so I felt grateful and I kind of thought well why am I feeling grateful I should be feeling sorry for myself because that's my natural go-to place. I love feeling sorry for myself. A little bit of self-pity. Um, you know. Yeah. I'd, I've always kind of seemed to have enjoyed that. Over the years. It's never helpful really. It can feel comforting at times. But ultimately not useful. It's a bit. Of, it's, yeah. It's not particularly good. You know, being the victim, even if you've been a victim, doesn't mean you have to be a victim. You know, it's it's not a 24-hour career, I don't think. I don't think it needs to be something that we do all the time. Because the only person it hurts is us. That's the, the horrible thing about it, isn't it? Is... Because anxiety, stress, panic, it could be caused by trauma that's happened in the past that may have been caused by another person. And very likely they don't care about it. They're not thinking about it. They might not even have meant it to happen. They might not know that it's caused trauma. You know, depending on what it was. So in a sense, the only way, the only person that's hurting is us by, you know, focusing on it, which increases anxiety, stress and all that stuff, all that good stuff. But gratitude, and I don't mean false gratitude, I'm not really into that. You know, like, oh, I'm so grateful I've got a carpet on the floor. It's like, well, yeah, I know some people can't afford to have a carpet. But, you know, when I first got the carpet in here, I was very grateful. It was lovely. But then Andre the ferret moved in and he destroyed the carpet within about a week. So the carpet, basically, his... Oh, I'm not even going into details, but he it's his, it's not mine. I walk on it, he owns it. I'm his lodger in this flat. But I feel grateful that I got him. So these are weird things. What are you grateful for? And what can you focus on that changes how you feel? Kind of instantly. What are you looking forward to? That's going to happen in the future. It could be 
something holiday you got coming up it might be a a family event i don't know it could be a birthday it could be maybe you're getting yourself a new car maybe you're having who knows maybe you're having uh liposuction or perhaps you're having uh you're getting married or <laughs> put those two together liposuction and getting married but you know something that's happening in the future you're starting a an educational course perhaps you're gonna who knows maybe you're saving up to get your hair done a specific way or there's a dress or a uh, you know a coat or a pair of shoes that you've been looking forward to getting or wearing or buying or maybe you're looking forward to having a clean out and getting rid of stuff maybe you're looking forward to your grandchildren visiting or maybe you've got a baby inside you looking forward to give, giving birth who knows what it is you don't get to see your, your little baby for the first time. What's that feeling or that thought that you can think of that changes how you feel in a positive way? We've all got something. There's always something. Um, it might be looking at a photograph of a loved one. See, I look at a picture. I've got a picture of my my nan, my grandmother, who's no longer here. But she's there's a picture of me with her, and she's looking happy, and I look happy. You know, next to her. It's a lovely picture. You know, if, to me, it's a lovely picture. But there are no horrible pictures of her. You know, they're all lovely. But there's that feeling. It's a feeling of, yeah, I had a really close, really, um, for me, like a close relationship with her. I had a connection, a, a good connection with my nan. So I look at that, and I, I feel a little bit sad, but I, at the same time, so it's probably not a good <laughs> example, actually, of something that makes you feel really good. Um, but it might do in the future. It's still, you know, not quite there yet with that. But if I see, look at a picture of Andre, I've got him on my phone. So when I'm out, sometimes I look at a picture of him and he's just so cute. And I think of him and... I feel good, you know, I feel, there's a degree of gratitude there, I feel grateful that he's in my life, he annoys the hell out of me sometimes, and right now he's in the bedroom, I just had a, <laughs> just had a look, he's in the bedroom, he's got his girlfriend, who's a, my old slipper, in his mouth, and he's humping um, one of my t-shirts so that's a little bit gross but he's still cute as ever you know not right now he's not but outside of that situation he's lovely and I haven't had a job since I've had him but I can see that if I was in a uh, you know not having a great day at work I could look at a picture of him and it could relax me. Could maybe feel a little bit calmer. Just even if it's just taking the edge off, you know? The difference between feeling stressed and feeling okay. Maybe I'm, I won't be completely floppy and all, you know, completely relaxed and melting on the floor in blissful relaxation but at least I won't be stressed you know at least my relaxation level will be at a better level than it was
So you've got the gratitude, you've got something you can look forward to. There's a couple of things that maybe could be a trigger to you feeling better, feeling more relaxed, feeling calmer, instantly. And I'm talking about something that has an instant reaction for you. And because it's natural, because it's something that's already there, it's already implanted in your mind, it's already connected to your nervous system by many, maybe many years of repeating the process. That it's already there, it's, it's, it's there. You don't need to create it. You just need to remember it. You need to find something that has that effect. A happy memory or a future. You know, an image of the future that you are looking forward to. something that when you think about it you feel good it doesn't have to be orgasmic just you feel good you feel good which is the flip coin it turns the other feeling on its head or on its tail you know it turns it upside down changes that feeling adds cold water into a bath that was too hot it was getting a bit too hot sometimes turning the hot tap off isn't enough you need to add some cold water as well and sometimes as you know if you add too much cold water you can't get the water hot again. No matter how much hot water you put in, it just won't get hot again. Which is a good thing because that stress levels can't raise to where they were because you've added that relaxation, that calmness, that pleasure, that really nice feeling changes changes how you are feeling instantly now there are ways that I can or not just me but I suppose anybody that knows how to could show you how to create your own version of this linking certain things to a feeling and then thinking about that thing but I was wondering maybe have a little search for something that's already available to you that's already doing that we've all got things that we think about that stimulate our emotions for good or bad you know for, uh, negative emotions and positive emotions there's different things that we can think about so when you focus on those things that increase your positive emotions instantly Your feelings change instantly the way you feel physically and emotionally your stress levels reduce your relaxation levels increase your general feeling of well-being improves 
and I know this is obvious it's so obvious but at the same time it's how we think and if someone's natural way of thinking seems to you know, shine the spotlight on the negative stuff then it's time to change the direction of that spotlight and start shining it on the thoughts, the memories, the ideas, um, the things you're grateful for, the things you're looking forward to. Those th thoughts that create and stimulate those nice feelings those positive feelings stimulate those positive feelings naturally instantly so you're in control of the spotlight and that's all you have to do this really is really really simple in a sense is there's nothing else for you to do other than just aim the spotlight at something and your mind and your body does the rest. You don't actually have to physically do anything. You know, you, you don't have to do the process of, well, now I'm thinking of this, and now I'm going to create this feeling to spread uh, from, you know, my brain's going to activate, and this uh, chemical is going to spread throughout my body so that I feel more relaxed and calmer and more positive. And at the same time, the stress levels can't live with that. You know, they can't be together. The stress levels automatically reduce in the same way as when you pour cold water into a hot bath. It starts to reduce the temperature of the bath. It's just how it works. And the more cold water that goes in, gets to the point where that stress level that could be represented by the hot water almost disappears to the point where you can't even get it back anymore because the cold water has eliminate, eliminated it, it's gone. But that happens naturally, you don't need to, to do anything other than just aim the spotlight at a thought. And if the thought is crappy, change the spotlight and aim it at something else. So you don't have to keep the spotlight on anything. You can change it at any time you want. So if you aim the spotlight at a happy event in the past and you feel really good and you know there's that feeling of calmness spreads through your body and you decide, oh, this feels too nice. I feel too calm and relaxed. You can change it to a different one. You know, maybe if you might feel too relaxed. I mean, there are times when maybe you want to feel relaxed, but, you know, also very alert to be able to do what you need to do. So, it's about managing it and choosing for yourself what you shine the spotlight on, where you aim it. And there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of things to choose from, especially if you're as old as me. Probably millions of things I could choose to aim the spotlight on has happened over the years. just choosing to shine that spotlight on something and maybe make a little photograph of it in your mind and when you think about that photograph and you look at it it automatically stimulates that feeling of relaxation just in the same way as yeah, if you're a regular listener to this podcast or you know to any of my other podcasts really even before you press the play button you already 
going to start feeling relaxed. The second you hear my voice going, Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com Blah, 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 only listen when you can safely close your eyes. It stimulates and triggers that sense of comfort in your body and in your mind. So even before you press the play button, you know that that thing at the beginning is going to happen. I'm going to say, welcome to jasonnewland.com. And I've been saying that for 14 years on pretty much every recording I've ever done. It, you know, I don't know if I could say anything else. Sometimes I do just say, hello, welcome to whatever the podcast is. But generally, and my name is Jason Newland. And, you know, but there's that feeling that comes with that. And not only do you feel a sense of comfort and relaxation at that moment, I also do. Because when I say those words, I automatically start to feel relaxed. Or even more relaxed. But at the same time, my brain is able to to function in a way where I can verbalise and hopefully communicate some ideas. And I don't even know where they come from half the time. I just have to have trust in... Um, <laughs> I was going to say the words to come that'd be good wouldn't it have a little bit of a break uh, oh yeah the words I have to have trust in that the correct things to come out of my mouth have uh, trust that what I say will be useful and relaxing and help to reduce the stress levels not just now but also tomorrow, also the day after, and the day after. As your relaxation levels increase, naturally, each day forward, feeling more comfort. So I'm going to leave you on that idea is to just Start, just start shining that spotlight on something maybe that you're grateful for maybe that you're looking forward to maybe that, where, that you can look back to that feels really nice a really happy memory or it could be as simple as remembering something that you've seen on a film like a funny moment in a comedy I mean, there's, there's something that I remember a comedy moment from years ago it was a French movie and I'm talking years back in 1994 I watched this or 93 and this, this man was in a caravan he came and walked into the caravan and the caravan had holes in the ceiling and the bucket and the holes were like letting water in because it was raining outside and the bucket was full of water so he had all these buckets to catch the water so it didn't go onto the floor so one of the buckets was full so he needed to empty it and he emptied it on the floor and then put the bucket back on the you know to catch the rest of the water now in my mind that is just you've got to see it for it to really have the effect but it's absolutely ridiculous it's on a level of it's really really silly and it was just hilarious I couldn't stop laughing because it's the whole idea is like you're collecting the water so it doesn't go on the floor and then just tipping it on the floor when it gets full 
a Millie, they probably have to watch the film, you know, to get the full benefits. But when I think about it, I feel good. Even now, even after all these years, because it's just so silly. And I like to tell people about it every now and then. Because I've no idea what the film was. And it's, you know, most of the people that I know probably haven't seen it. Because it was uh, a French film, French language. It wasn't like a a famous English, you know, speaking film. So I like to tell people about it now and then. And I feel good telling them. They sometimes look at me like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, Jason? But it's okay, I don't mind. So maybe there's something in a movie that you've watched or something that maybe you've got a child, niece, nephew, grandson, grandchild, whatever, daughter, that said something that was just hilarious, that was just so, you know, just so funny. And even now, it might have happened 30 years ago, but even now, you think about it and it just, oh, that was funny. There was something that happened with my nan years ago. We were watching a movie. Um, Shirley Valentine, I think the film was. And there was, it was, this, it was, uh, this is totally true, I can't. But anyway, the, there was a point in it where someone, the woman, with the whole family was there watching this movie. And there's a point where one of the characters in the film says, oh, where's the, uh, so it mentions the word clitoris yeah that that was it and my nan shouted out what's a clitoris and we all started laughing but like they kept it kind of a little bit inside but I had to leave the room and could not stop laughing now I don't know if my nan was just having a laugh but it wasn't like her to say something like that, you know, she's very, she wasn't, she wouldn't come out with something rude, not on purpose. Uh, not that that's a rude word, it's just a part of the body, isn't it? It's no more ruder than you saying your ear or your knee, you know, it's just a part of the body. But it was just so funny, the way she just came out with it. And even to this day, I just it just makes me internally giggle because it was funny and it's never not going to be funny it's not as funny as what it was at the time at the moment and but that's just a couple of examples that I can kind of get in touch with and it doesn't have to be funny, you know, it could just be nice, a nice memory, a nice feeling. And, you know, getting your first job, getting your first paycheck, um, you know, passing your driving test. Uh, you know, it could be anything, the, your first kiss, your first passing your exams, getting the results getting into the college you wanted to get into just you know but shining on those positive things shining a light on the positive things as opposed to the other stuff and there's plenty of that to choose from as well but why would you choose that what would be the point You know, if I was going to make a a session on how to feel stressed and crappy and all that stuff, that would be easy. I could make that session. I could make a hundred recordings a day on that. It's the easiest thing in the world to focus, you know, to be focused on that stuff. But that's the opposite to what is useful for us. And besides, no one needs help with that. No one needs help on how to, you know, get in touch with that, the other stuff.
but maybe you can give yourself help by flashing that light shining it brightly and finding some of those things that maybe you've forgotten about the good stuff only the good stuff only the happy stuff only the funny stuff only the positive stuff shining the light only on the those things memories things you're grateful for things you're looking forward to that actually have that natural reaction within you where you feel good which causes relaxation within your body and your mind and while you're shining that light around if you come across something you don't like move along to the next thing because that's not relevant it's not part of what we're doing here you know sometimes like the other day I cleaned the toilet and it's part of my brain saying well the sink needs to be cleaned as well you know what I said to my mind you know what I said I said I don't care about the sink I'm cleaning the toilet that's all I'm doing today I'm just going to clean not all I'm doing the whole day but that's the only thing I was going to clean was the toilet the sink I can do a different day and that's what I focused on and I felt good afterwards because it was done rather than feeling oh but I could have done more and there's other stuff to do no I'm going to I'm going to take the victory I'm going to be the hero the toilet cleaning hero and now every time I look in the toilet it's only been a couple of days I think yeah it's nice and clean and I feel a little bit of I don't know a little bit of pleasure and it's not you know it's not it's not life changing but it's a little bit of like yeah I feel better now that it's clean it's the little things sometimes I don't really want to end it on talking about cleaning toilets but you know that's not what this recording is about it's about you it's about what you can focus on what you choose to focus on because all a choice I talk about you know in the past you choose what you do next will you choose what you focus on next So if you've got something that you think about and you don't like it, don't like the result, don't like the response that you physically have or emotionally have to that thought, treat it the same way you would if you put something in your mouth, a bit of food that you didn't like. You'd just spit it out, wouldn't you? You know, if, if you're at home and you're trying some food for the first time, maybe it's a takeaway... Chinese, Indian, Mexican, pizza, whatever it is. And it's you're trying something new and you taste it, or maybe you know, so you've got someone that's with you and they say, Oh, try this. And you try it and you don't like it. Well, you're going to chew it up and eat it, or you're going to spit it out, maybe into a napkin, not necessarily on the floor, because that could be classed as rude, especially if you're in a restaurant. you're not going to eat it because it tastes horrible or you know for you, to you it doesn't taste nice in the same way if there's a, a thought that doesn't feel nice when you think about it and if you don't have to think about it then move on to a different thought that you feel nice about that you know, helps you to feel relaxed 
in the same way if you eat something and you think Ugh, that's a bit Ugh, don't like that you don't chuck away the entire takeaway you know you think oh I don't like that but I'll eat the rest of this stuff because that's nice I like that but not that and you eat the other stuff that you do like and that's what you focus on the things that you do like so I'm going to leave you on that thought so thank you for listening remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy lots of love bye